Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. 1012 days less the Russian invasion of Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky said that if Ukraine joined NATO during the war, Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty, which provides for collective protection, may not apply to its entire territory, reports European Pravda. The President stressed that Ukraine will never legally recognize any occupation of its lands by Russia, thus invitation to NATO should cover the whole of Ukrainian land, even if security guarantees won't cover the entire Ukrainian territory. At the same time, Zelensky stated that official Kyiv had not received any recommendations from partners regarding the alliance's membership agreement. Earlier, President Zelensky acknowledged the possibility of Ukraine signing a quote-unquote ceasefire agreement if the Ukrainian-controlled territory is brought, quote, under the NATO umbrella, unquote. The Ukrainian authorities previously recognized that the alliance would not invite Kyiv to join until the war is over and said that such accession would take place precisely within internationally recognized borders. Also, Zelensky has stated yesterday that representatives of the EU and NATO should participate in potential negotiations with Russia after Ukraine strengthens its position. Quote, why? Because we see ourselves as part of the security system within these alliances, and in this format I understand when we can sit down and we will talk about because I will understand who surrounds us and what agreements can be reached." Unquote. The President emphasized that the most challenging issue to address will be whether Russia is willing to recognize Ukraine as an independent country at all. The Ukrainian leader also underscored the danger of freezing the conflict without securing a strong position for Ukraine, warning that such an outcome would lead to renewed aggression from Russia. Quote, if the conflict is frozen without any strong position for Ukraine, then Putin will return in two, three, five years. This does not depend on us. He will return and will destroy us completely, unquote, Zelensky stated. The president added that he does not ask Ukraine's partners to deploy troops in the country because such a request would likely cause about half of them to withdraw their support entirely. Quote, we will never ask to have troops sent to our territory. Do we want it? Yes, of course, we would be happy. Because Putin is allied with North Korea and Iran, while we are fighting on our own. Yes, with help of our partners, and we are grateful for that, but we are fighting on the ground on our own. And if I raise the issue of needing foreign troops, whether from NATO or elsewhere, half of our allies would immediately stop their support. That's why I cannot take this risk." Unquote. President of the European Council, Antonio Costa, announced during his visit to Kyiv that the European Union will continue to support Ukraine economically, humanitarily and militarily in 2025, reports Economichna Pravda. By the end of the year, the EU will allocate 4.2 billion euros and in 2025 it will transfer 1.5 billion euros from frozen Russian assets every month. The President of the European Council noted that the EU will continue to put pressure on the Russian economy and is already working on the 15th package of sanctions to reduce Russia's ability to wage war against Ukraine. This summer G7 countries and the EU agreed to provide Ukraine with loans that would be gradually paid off by profits from freezed Russian assets. The UK announced that it will give almost 3 billion US dollars and the US 20 billion. We would really appreciate if you could rate us ideally with 5 stars and leave a glowing review in the app where you are listening to this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify and others. This really helps more people to find out about the highlights from Ukraine and truth about Russia's invasion. In November, the Russian army suffered the most losses since the start of the large-scale invasion, reports Army Inform. According to the Defense Ministry of Ukraine, 45,720 military personnel were killed and wounded during that month. On one day in November, Ukrainian forces had 2,030 Russian soldiers killed or wounded. This also marks the largest number of Russian casualties in a single day since 24th of February 2022. In November, Ukraine's armed forces hit 307 Russian tanks. In addition, 899 Russian armored fighting vehicles and 884 artillery systems were destroyed. Ukraine's defense ministry assessed that the Russian overall loss of weapons and equipment in November exceeded 3 billion US dollars. 
Ukrainian high jumper Yaroslava Mahuchi has been named the world's best female athlete of 2024, reports champion. Yaroslava Mahuchi received the award at the World Athletics Awards ceremony. 2024 has been an extraordinary year for Mahuchi. She became the Olympic champion in high jump, the European champion and the indoor world championship silver medalist. Additionally, the athlete from the city of Dnipro, who is only 23, won the Diamond League title for the third consecutive time. One of Mahuchik's most remarkable achievements in 2024 was breaking the long-standing world record in high jump with a leap of 2.1 meter. The previous record of 2.09 meter held by Stefka Kostandinova has stood since 1987. Thank you for listening to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast. We are a commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.